welcome to a brand new episode of Best Kept Secrets with me, Lele Pons. This is the show where anonymous callers reveal their biggest secrets to us, things they've never told anybody, their friends, families, or even their partners. That's especially true to our callers today, who both want to talk about secrets from their past that they're not sure whether to reveal to the people they're dating. This is a subject that I relate to because I've had a lot of experience trying to change myself to make a guy like me back. And I totally understand why people do it because in the moment, it seems like it makes sense. But if there's one thing that I've learned about this is that you can never build a healthy relationship if you're pretending to be somebody that you're not. For example, uh, when I was young, I really didn't think I was beautiful or pretty. So every single time that I would, I would be with this one guy here in LA, I would do my makeup. Like I would not do my own makeup because I suck. I would actually grab someone to do my makeup, like full on makeup and hair as if I was always perfect on top of my stuff. And he never saw me without full on glam. And that actually started making my act like I had a lot of acne because of that. And at the end, when I actually stopped liking him, he actually first time he saw me and I was without glam. And he was like, oh, like, wow, you're 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 so cute. You know, she, you look so young, he said. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I should have done that the first day because that created so many problems. And trust me, we are not glammed up all the time. And that's what I was like. He never saw me like waking up. I would even like put like never take out my eyelashes and I would never see him more than two days because then I would have to go back and get my makeup done in the middle of the day. It was a disaster. The following content contains adult subject matter, including sensitive material and is intended for adult consumption only. It may not be suitable for all audiences. Therefore, discretion is advised. Lele Pons is not a trained expert, but is using her personal experiences and platform to create a space for sensitive discussions. Later on on the show, I'm going to be talking to Jessica, who has been dating his girlfriend for a year and a half and has never told her about the secret hobby he gave up to be with her. Okay, let's see what that's about. But before that, let's call Charles, who says a girl he wanted to date rejected him when he opened up to her about his secret. Let's find out what that secret is. Hi, Charles. Hi, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing today? Uh, not too bad. I'm I'm okay. Do you feel comfortable telling us your best kept secret? Yes, sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Please do tell. I should say I should start by saying, you know, I'm a relatively normal professional uh, male. Um, not known for really doing too much that's crazy. But a few years ago, I saw an ad on Craigslist about. Um, looking for like men for like adult amateur adult films and it was something that I'd always kind of fantasized about and I actually responded to the ad and I wound up making one film that turned into like half a dozen films that are out there and it's probably like that's that's my secret situation oh my god Uh, are we talking about (laughs) like porn yeah, yeah, basically, yes, yes, that's what it was. Amazing. Well, uh, not well. If it's amazing for you, it's amazing. I mean, it's you know how like don't be like seriously. Everybody was like, "Oh, you do porn, you do porn." L- listen, you watch it, all right? Who doesn't watch porn? Exactly, exactly. So I understand. Yeah, and I was a huge fan of that stuff just from you know a watching perspective, and I had talked to friends about it. And, like we always fantasized about making some or something. Or I, you know, I had one friend that I talked about, and they're like, yeah, it would be great to direct a film or make one or act in one. But it was just the kind of thing like it's one thing to talk about it, but um, yeah, like I saw that ad and it was an opportunity, and, and I did it. And um, it's yeah, it's weird because. Like I said, I'd never really done anything like that. And now that it's, it's out there and you kind of like sign release forms and stuff and, and it's, it's like out there for life. <laughs> and it's, I mean, I haven't really had any, uh, no one's really found it, but it's sort of like a, in a way, it's sort of like a ticking time bomb. You think about it because I mean, if people found out about it, it would be, uh, I think they would be kind of freaked out. And I, I had one experience where I was, um, I, I really have it. There was one close friend who I told about it. You know, one one close friend who I've known all my life. I told him about it. And he thought it was kind of crazy, but um, but you know, I guess he understood. But I had there was a woman that I was about to date who I've known for actually I've known for years. We were kind of getting close, and we talked about dating. And she's not super conservative. I mean, she told me some experiences about some sexual stuff that she's done that's yeah. a little wild and stuff. So I kind of opened up. Yeah, she had like a 
threesome with a couple of guys, and I thought that was kind of cool. And okay, um, so I thought, okay, I, I thought I can tell her about this, and she'll understand. And she so didn't. I told her. And she just totally flipped, and then she she thought like she accused me of being on drugs. She said, "Were you on drugs?" And I said, "No, you know." And so she totally didn't understand it. It just derailed anything that we had. You know, we're still friends, but um, it derailed like anything we had romantically. And um, I thought, "Oh my god!" After that, I thought, you know, I don't know who I want to share this with. I mean, I, obviously, I wouldn't really share it with that many people, but. I thought I was doing the right thing by opening up to her and it just really kind of blew up in my face completely. So it was, it was, listen, for some people, kind of weird. for some people, porn is a deal breaker, but there are adult industry workers who have you know, like loving and accepting p- partners. It sucks. She couldn't get on board, but there are people like that, you know? And yeah, th- just because she didn't take it the right way. doesn't mean that everyone's going to take it the same way that she took it. I know. I know. And, and I'm pretty open-minded about this stuff. Um, and the funny thing about that was, so she, she thought it was not like, she just didn't, she just couldn't understand it. Then I told her what name I, she said, well, what name did you use? And I, like I told her, and then she like looked up these videos and, um, she was, it was just, she watched them, watched a lot of them. And then she would, she was like criticizing the women in them. Like, I can't believe you could be attracted to her. And that woman has that tattoo and that's so trashy. And I thought, oh my God, it was just ridiculous. Oh, jealous but type. yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's the kind of thing. There was a video that had, um, I got up to like 100,000 views. And I thought, I mean, I would watch it go up in views. And I thought, oh my God, you know, I hope it doesn't. And what were people saying? It, it had a few comments. I mean, the, the, it's funny, you know, the first time, um, before my first shoot, I thought, you know, I thought, okay, I can do this. I thought I thought it was going to be easier than it was. My shoot, first shoot was really pretty much a failure. You go in. And there's a camera guy. There's the woman I met. This she was uh, this she was attractive. She was like tw- early twenties. She was an African American woman. Um, I was attracted to her, but it's just such an artificial kind of a setting. You're in this hotel room. And, you know, this cameraman setting up his lights, and I'm thinking, and then just something happens where I, mean, I had kind of. Well, the night before, I actually had. I mean, I, I drank some wine. I went out with a few friends. That was probably a mistake, but it was. Like getting things going, like under those circumstances for the day of the shoot, it, it was. I mean, it, I mean, basically, it was. A, I was. A, <laughs> I was pretty much a failure that first time. It was. It was kind of terrible, and I was. I got nervous, and I was talking, and I was trying to compensate for my poor performance by like talking. So I mean, I couldn't keep my mouth shut. I'm jabbering like a like an idiot, and like I can't really get my equipment to work. And like it got to the point where like the cameraman is kind of like heckling me a little bit and I, it was just, oh it was just crazy but that yeah but it, yeah I mean that I was able to kind of get it together a little bit at the end but the second time I did it I was and at that point I had to do another one to sort of redeem myself yeah and I thought the second time it was better but I mean yeah and I have respect for the guys that can just go in and be t- and the stuff I was doing was just kind of really like amateur stuff it's um, okay. It's not that you are a professional one. It's your first one or your second one. That's okay. It's a lot of pressure. You know, you're probably worried about getting it up and keeping it up and wanting your d- dick to always look big and all that. I mean, did you enjoy yourself once you started having sex or were you all in? Like- it was enjoyable. It was, uh, again, it's just, it's so, I mean, it felt like, it felt like trying, like trying to get like an erection under those circumstances. It almost felt like, like you, when you're like at the doctor's, it's like getting an erection at like the doctor's office or something. It's such a clinical, such an artificial kind of environment. But but it did on the second the second shoot, I was better. I just said to myself because I had watched some of the first one. And I thought, oh my god, I'm like talking and it was just ridiculous. So I thought I just got to keep my mouth shut. And my friend actually let me borrow a Viagra, and that helped actually. That took a lot of pressure off. But the problem with that was. There was a, that was actually a different director. And this woman would, uh, it was a female director for the second shoot. And, um, you got paid well? It, uh, hard, almost, not hard, almost nothing really. It was more just to do it. I, I, the, the actress got paid. I think she got paid really well, but I got paid almost nothing. So it was, for me, it was never really about the money. It was more about just doing something I want to do. And, you know, so, um, but for the second shoot, like it was much better. I had taken my, I mean, it sounds crazy. I took the Viagra just because you need it. Just why not? You know, it's some insurance. So we were 
getting ready for, you know, we, we started, uh, like, you know, we started filming and everything was fine, but this director had a different style where you would start like a scene, you'd start a certain activity and then, you know, 10 minutes would go by or whatever it would go by. And then she'd say, okay, stop. And we're going to set up like another shot. And then it would take like 10 minutes. So you'd be sitting, you'd be standing there for 10 minutes trying to like keep your thing going, you know? And then all of a sudden she sets up the camera for another shot and it's like, okay, all right, start up again. And I'm thinking it's, and then like at that point it was difficult to kind of get things going again. So, but I did do better in in the second. It's okay. I believe, I believe you (laughs) now that I'm going to go check it out, but I believe you. I mean, it sounds like you, you lived out a fantasy of yours, but doesn't sound like you enjoyed it. Sadly. It was great in a lot of a lot of ways. It, again, it was a lot of these things seem. I mean, what guy doesn't say, "Oh yeah, I want to be in porn. I could do it. Oh yeah, I could, I could be great at it." It's, there's something that happens when you get in there in that environment, just to be able to turn it on like that. And uh, not to say that I could. I mean, I like I said, I just, the later shoots I did a little bit better. But man, I have respect for the guys that just go in. Yeah. And they can, do that. I mean, do you still film videos? I had, you know, I haven't. Um, oh, why did you stop? Well, I don't know. I mean, it was mostly like a uh, lack of opportunity, really. Um, where I am, I'm not in Southern California, so it's not like there's a ton of that stuff happening here. So um, I had that one opportunity. It led to some more. Um, I did like a domination themed video about a year ago, and there was really not like direct sex like involved in that. It was like a female dominatrix. It was it was kind of like verbal domination and a little, like a little light physical domination. It was a domination themed shoot. And I have a close female friend now. I thought about telling her, but it's like I'm a little shy about it. After and it's kind of like a dilemma too. Like if I get into another situation, I'm single now, but if I'm in a situation where I'm about to date someone, it's like okay, do you tell them and risk blowing things up? Uh, or then if you do, but if you do, you know, if you don't tell them, like, is that being dishonest? It's like a dilemma. Is that being dishonest? If you well, you sound open minded. So I think you, you're the woman that you want needs to be too. And I think if she loves you and whoever you're dating will understand. Yeah. I mean, I hope so. And I think that especially in this day and age, I mean, to me, like porn is like mainstream now, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, to me it is. So, I mean, I understand some people still don't feel that way. That's why it was just so shocking. And to, I like guess my coworkers found out, I, I don't know what would happen. It would definitely be bad. I would never want that to happen. But I feel like there's so much of that stuff out there. Like I said, when I when I had that one video that was going up in view count, like the view count got over 100,000. I thought, oh my God, you know. And then sometimes like my boss would call me, like if I got a random call, which happened a few times, I got a random call from my boss like at nine o'clock at night. I thought, oh my God, they found out, you know. <laughs> but it was, it, 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 you do think about that, like what would happen if, you know, if I tried to become a politician now, I'd be screwed. I mean, not that I'd ever want to be a politician, but it's like... <laughs> You're right. It's a very dangerous stuff. It's very, like, you know, when once you put out your, like, your life or something out there in the web, it's hard. But, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, I mean, I, when things get back to normal, I would consider doing it again. I definitely would. And I think that it can be uh, kind of a healthy way, too, to explore different aspects of your sexuality. You should. You should. And the first step is talking to us right now. So yeah. You have nothing to be embarrassed about. So I can tell you, like, this is this is not a big deal. Don't worry. So if, if hopefully the next girl who actually doesn't make you feel bad for something like this, that's a keeper. Yeah. Th- yeah. And I think that, like, I'll definitely tell the next person I'm about to date and hopefully... She'll understand. If she doesn't, then that's not the right one for me, I guess. I think you should start with that, actually. Yeah, maybe maybe the next one will, will want to make a video with me, you know? Hey. Yeah, you never know. You never know. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing this. And if you do make one with another person or find the love of your life, come here, back here, and talk about it with us. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. If I was him, I would start with that story first, to be honest, when I meet someone. Hey, by the way, I've done this and this and this and this and this. Because... To go throughout all the relationship and put your, the time into it for you later to say something and they're not going to, like, you know, understand, it's a waste of time. I'm telling you, it's a waste of time. You're going to get your heart broken. And I think when you have a secret like that, just come clean from the beginning. And if that person doesn't doesn't understand, then you, didn't have an, you don't have anything, like, any memories with that person. So you're good. You're not going to cry about it because you're just starting. So... I think that's my best advice that I can give him is for the next one to do that, to come clean right away. And um, it's a decision he made, so he shouldn't be 
feeling ashamed about it especially now since porn is something that's li- like mainstream you know like it's something that everybody's seeing right now everybody has something to do with it there's songs about it and yeah I hope he finds the perfect girl alright guys we're gonna be back with more secrets so hang tight and we'll be right back after this break Alright guys, we're back right now and we're gonna go right into our second caller with Jessica. Let's give him a call. Hi Jessica. Hi, how are you doing? I'm doing great, I'm doing great. I'm really curious to know what is your best kept secret? Oh man. Alright, since I'm already on the phone, gotta tell it now, I'm committed. Um Yes I you do. Used to be super into cosplay. Okay, what is cosplay by the way? Just for people that don't know. It's like dressing up like your favorite you know video game characters your film characters or you know graphic novel characters like comic-con yeah yeah and you don't do that anymore no um i got into a relationship and she didn't really like nerdy stuff so i chose her over that because it'd been a while since i was you know with someone and i got needs yeah, no, of course you have needs, but are they worth you not being yourself? I mean... I mean, is it something that you really loved? Because I think that, you know, you have to be with somebody that accepts you. That's the key to a relationship. You know, you have to accept each other. You're not wrong, but when, when you're the type of person who spends a lot of money on costumes to dress up like other people, it's not like they're really lining up at the door for you, you know what I mean? Yeah, of course, but if it's something you love... Uh, I just wouldn't change for anybody. I wouldn't. That That's cool. That's probably why you're the one making the call and not telling the secret. Uh, no, but I have a, yeah, a lot of secrets. <laughs> I have a bunch of them. I just, I just, you know, I've learned a lot of lessons, so that's why I'm saying that. I've gone through that before. I've changed before, and it wasn't pretty. Right on. So how, how old were you when you started dressing up? Uh, I was about 20. And how old are you now, by the way? Me, I'm 27. Okay, so seven years. Well, when did you meet your girlfriend? Uh, about a year and a half ago. Okay, okay. And you never told her before? No, I, I have kept that part of my life a secret from her. Were you still into cosplay when you met? I mean, yeah. Um, I was definitely into it and, you know, loved doing it and stuff. But uh, I gave it up for her and companionship. Did she, did she, is there something that she said that didn't, didn't like kind of stopped you from telling her that? Yeah, pretty early on, on one of our first dates, um, we were just, you know, talking about past relationships and mistakes we'd made along the way or things we'd learned. And she talked about how she once broke up with a guy for being too nerdy. And I was in my head like, uh, okay, I know something I don't want to say right now. Do you consider yourself a nerd? But I guess so. I don't think you're a nerd. I think you're just passionate. I just, it's just like, and who cares? Like, that's horrible to say that. No offense, but like, nerds are dope. Nerds are cool. Like, I don't know. It's the same thing as saying, like, I wouldn't date someone that's like overweight or something. Who cares? Like, they're their own person and they're dope. I mean, if she loves you on the inside, she will. This is not a problem. There's a lot more problems in the world. Like, for example, if you were a murderer, if you were going to jail, if you were a cocaine act- addict. Yes, that's a problem, you know? But it's something mm-hmm. that you love, to be honest. Like, I mean, eventually, you know, hopefully, I, I, I say you, you, you meet another girl that will, you know, love that you're a nerd. Hopefully. I will love it. Well, you, you, do you know any girls that are into guys who dress up? My boyfriend's a nerd. So, like, that's why I'm just like, eh, I don't, I don't, I don't relate to her, to your girlfriend. And, uh, did she ever see your social media and pictures? Um, I mean, of course, we're friends on social media with each other. Um, I've done pretty extensive work to try and scrub that part of it. I like, sent messages to everybody, like, please, 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 please don't tag me in this stuff. Like, I don't know. Like, of Aww. course, this could all come crashing down if she goes too far back or too into the snoopings and stuff. And what um, is she going to say? Happened yet. What is she going to say? Oh, my God, you like cosplay? Bye. If she tells that to any of her friends, they're gonna be like, "Yo, you're fucking weird." Like, there's so many problems that point, guys have. I'm too committed. Like, I've been keeping it a secret for 
like a year and a half. I can't really. Do you miss it? Of course they do. Oh, man. I don't know. I don't know. I'm pretty sure she's a great girl and she's hot and everything, but she sounds like she's pro- that type of person that's not going to accept it her if her son is gay kind of thing. You know? Those people that like are not open-minded. Like, there are girls that like nerds. Many. Well, she's a good person. I may be misrepresenting her here. Like, she is an awesome, awesome, awesome person. It's just, this is okay. a part of me that I've hidden from her. Okay, okay. Well, it's, maybe it's because I've had just many relationships. And that was, like, something that, like, wasn't a good part of my relationship. The one when, when the guys, like, didn't accept me for who I was. But if you love her, listen, if you think she's more important than you and your love for cosplay, then go ahead, you know? Um, I, I, I'm in your side. I appreciate that. I just want you, I, I just rather you being like true to yourself in front of her, uh, than, than not, you know, because it kind of yeah. hurts, but maybe you, you, you aren't giving her enough credit. Maybe she, she wouldn't think of you differently if you told her, maybe she's just like, I love you too much. I, I, like it's going to take me some time, but, uh, but I accept maybe she will say that, you know? Maybe in the beginning yeah. she'll be like no, but then maybe she if you say that she's an amazing girl like I I don't think she'd be like mean. I've thought about it. Maybe I'll dip toes in the water with uh taking her to a convention or something once all the world goes back to normal. Yeah, exactly. And uh, do you have a lot in common with her? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, we both love watching baseball. We both love hiking. We both love fishing. We oh, like okay. machines that have big engines and go really fast sounds like you have so much fun with her and so much in common i mean that's a good thing too do you have something you don't like about her like that you that you don't like like for example like you say that that she doesn't like nerds but is there something that you don't like about girls i I don't care for like the superficialness and like the constantly posting stuff and like the whole if it isn't on the internet it didn't happen type thing i understand that completely that's how my boyfriend is too uh-huh. But it's okay because cosplay is just one part of your life, and I don't think you should, you know, give up something you that that you love. But you know, if uh, if if it's easy for you to to put it aside for this girl, I'll continue. Yeah. I don't want you to lose a girl either, but I'm just saying, um, eventually, you should tell her. And it, what and you know what, whatever she says should determine whether you want to be with her or not. Right now, it might be the nerd problem but in the future it might be something else yeah just keep sacrificing stuff for yeah just make sure you don't sacrifice anything else all right i'll do that (laughs) good good well thank you so much for calling uh this was amazing and uh good luck with her you know hopefully it continues to be to get stronger your relationship yeah uh, i mean i got good hopes for it yes (laughs) thank you so much for calling you're welcome bye I think this was a little bit of an awkward situation because I was projecting my feelings and my past relationships and my past experiences with this guy. And probably, yeah, he did probably, he said that he he didn't give her enough credit. Uh, but, and, but he loves her so much and she's an amazing girl. I just, you know, I went straight to my experience. And I just think that you shouldn't change for anybody, no matter what. And that's how I think. So that was my opinion. But, you know, not a lot of people think like that people will actually change for people and that's okay and i respect that i just don't agree with it that's what i was trying to tell him i don't agree with it but i'm not forcing anything if he wants to be like that if he wants to put something that he loved aside because the girl doesn't accept nerds that's you know that's that's his decision i just can't do anything about it i just can i all i can do is give my advice you know and what i think and i was on his side definitely not on her side Okay, so I have a lot to say about these calls. Uh, First of all, thank you so much again to Charles and Jessica for calling in and sharing their very personal secrets with us. But I have to say, I feel so sad for Charles because he's obviously had his confidence knocked by being rejected by the person he liked when he told her he'd done porn. I mean, yeah, it's, you know, it's not what everybody wants to hear, but still, you should not reject. Like, you're not perfect either. And that's saying something, though. Because it takes a lot of confidence to do porn in the first place. So I give him props for that. He said he thought that he was doing the right thing by opening up to her, which I think is it's, it's true. But now he sounds like he regrets it because it blew up in his face. But that doesn't always happen. That's very important to know. This girl is just very 
you know, not that open-minded. And maybe the next one, and he should try, the next one will be. You never know. What I want to say is he was doing the right thing. I think he's much better off knowing from the start that, that she isn't open-minded enough to accept his history of making porn. My advice to him would be that from now on, he should tell people early on about his porn adventures because whoever the right person is for him isn't going to judge him. And if they do judge him, then at least it's in the beginning, you know, and he didn't waste his time. I think if he tries to start building a relationship without being honest about this, then, you know, it's going to be a ticking bomb and it's going to blow up out of nowhere. Like he said, he already worries about whenever his boss calls him at a weird time. He has absolutely nothing to be ashamed about. And I think the best way to move forward for, for him is to open up and be honest at the start. Speaking of honesty, I actually kind of feel the same way about Jessica's secret. I think he's created a ticking bomb for himself by not telling his girlfriend about his love for cosplay. It may be that she eventually finds out about his costumes from seeing or pictures or talking to his family, but even if she doesn't find out, then the other time bomb is how long will Jessica keep ignoring the fact that he's missing out on something he clearly loves to do? You can hear it on the call that he really misses it and he could easily start to resent his girlfriend for not letting him do it, which isn't really fair. I mean, she has no idea he even likes it. Uh, I can, I don't know if she will like it. You never know. I mean, I understand that she doesn't like nurse. That's what he said, which I don't agree with. I think that's very... I don't even want to talk about it. I think I said what I thought about it. I really think that the best thing for Jessica to do in this situation is to be honest with his girlfriend about the fact that cosplay brings him joy. If she's into it, then great. And if she breaks up with him because of it, then I don't think she was going to be there for him for anything else. I mean, she's not the one and it's not worth it. And it's good that you found out sooner than later. I do sympathize with him, though. And because it's a tough situation and one I'm sure a lot of us have been through, I want to find out how common it really is. So head over to my Instagram for the question of the week, which is, do you hide things about yourself on dates? I think many of us do, unless you're super confident about yourself. Uh, I have. I think I've used to do that, but I think it's best to put it out there. Let me know if you agree by voting in the poll on my Instagram at Lillipons. That's our show for today. Thanks, Charles, Jessica, and all of you listening in. Thank you so much for this. We'll be back next Wednesday with more best kept secrets. Don't go changing. If you or someone you know are struggling emotionally, text START to 741-741 for a confidential chat anytime. Bum, bum. Thanks for listening to Best Kept Secrets with me, Lele Pons, only on Spotify in partnerships with Shot Studios. The Shot Studios original team includes creators John Shahidi and Sam Shahidi, my lovely producer Belinda Mercer, and audio editor Stephen Colon. From Spotify Studios executive producers Javier Pinot, Liz Gailey, Gina Delvac, and Danny Trebaj. And a special thanks to Dan Behar, Jessica Molina, Francisco Quijada, and Julio Pabon. I'm Lele. Follow me on Instagram at Lele Pons and check out my exclusive merch at lilshop.com. That is lilshop, L-I-L, shop.com. Talk to you next week.